Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and I'm back here once again in the basement trying to film a video for you all. So I actually spent an hour this morning filming this video upstairs on the shop floor, but in the hour before the shop opened, seemingly the phone must have rung every two or three seconds and eventually I realised that I was having to make too many cuts in between the video and the best thing I could do would be come back down here and film it all for you again. So if you've seen the teaser trailer for this video and it looks completely different to the real thing, now you know why. Anyway, this video today is about 10 ukuleles that we absolutely love to recommend to our customers, specifically tenor instruments, because let's face it, at a certain price point, the, the concert and the tenor ukulele, they fight for your attention. And we've featured plenty of concert ukuleles in the last few months, but not so many tenor instruments. So I thought, okay, let's take 10 tenor instruments, starting at 140 pound, going all the way up to three and a half grand with a cannelaire. And for their price point, let's point out what makes them special and what makes us like to recommend them to you the customer so we're going to look at snail kai court eastman martins we're going to look at a perkins we're going to look at ponos koa Loas, the rebel and kind of layered like you've got a big range of brands there all really sitting nicely at their price point and standing out in their own unique way i'm going to start with the snail ukt 598 let's begin Okay, the first ukulele we're going to look at today is the Snail UKT598. What makes the UKT598 special? Well, it's a good alternative to our most popular ukulele, which is the Snail SUT-M1. The SUC and SUT-M1 concert and tenor versions have a gloss finish and mahogany, which people absolutely love if they want something that looks traditional but has a bit of pizzazz. But that's not what all people are after. Some people just prefer the sound and feel of a satin instrument. And for those people, we recommend this model. The UKT598 has a laminar ebony top, back and sides with a really cool rope binding around the outside and a rosette too. It's, a, it's also on the back. You don't see too many back bindings, but this is a really cool back binding there. Uh, the snails have a mahogany neck, but what sets them apart most from other instruments at this price point is the ebony fingerboard and bridge. You see, for £140, you're going to really struggle to find any other instrument with an ebony fingerboard and bridge. And ebony is a very stiff wood that when you, pl when you fret ebony, you get a very true, very clear note. And that's not always the case with rosewood, walnut. Um, some of those tone woods that are used on the fingerboard affect the sound and affect the feel. And the snail, for its price, which, you know, under £150 here in the UK in, in the middle of 2019, it's just a big step above other instruments you can get for £100 to £150. And we love it. So I'm going to play it for you now. This is the UKT598. Okay, and the next instrument I've got for you guys today is the Kai KTI 700. And the KTI 700 has really blown us away for a variety of reasons, actually. First of all, if you look at it, it's just a cool, big tenor with really pretty Bacote back and sides and a very practical, solid cedar top. Now, cedar is very, very good if you want an, a tone wood that gives you a true reflection of what you're playing. So a clear, crisper note. Uh, and quite often with a bit more volume. You know, gloss cedar, in my opinion, is gonna be the loudest top wood that you can get. And if you play in a ukulele group and you're always thinking, I just wish I could hear myself a bit better, this might be the ukulele for you because it has all the pizzazz that you'd need. It has a strap button already out of the factory, so you can just put your strap on, and it has a side sound hole. So you're really benefiting from the sound of this wood as much as the person in front of you. You, the player, you're getting 
a true reflection of the sound as well. Uh, these have um, an oven coal fingerboard and bridge with a little inlay there on, around the 12th fret and a 35mm nut width with a Bacote head plate there just with the Kai logo. So it's, even on the front you're getting a little bit of the kind of quirky extrovert uh, look that you need and also a Paduke binding all the way around much like the really popular Carla ATP CTG model. This ukulele has everything that the ATP CTG has going for it and then a little side sound hole to make it more uh, focused towards the player rather than the audience. Yeah, the Kai KTI 700. We've not been doing them very long, but in the time we've been doing them, I've seen more people walk out the door with one of these than any other ukulele up to 200 pounds. So this is the Kai KTI 700. Okay, the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Court UKE BWTEN. But what does that stand for? It means the Uke Blackwood Tenor. And I featured Court in a previous video when uh, looking at sopranos, where I've mentioned in depth the relationship Court have with many of the larger music instrument brands out there in the world and how they are effectively the agent in China and Indonesia manufacturing many of the instruments for Ibanez, uh, the Fender Squire range, the Epiphones, if, you name it. If there's a big brand that have outsourced some work to China in the last 20 years, then it's quite likely that Court is the brand responsible for manufacturing that instrument. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is that they are a big deal and you should definitely take a look at this instrument. The Court Blackwood Tenor is unique for a couple of reasons. First of all, Blackwood is not a wood you see on many instruments at this price point. You see it on quite a few luthier built instruments, but Blackwood is special in my opinion because it has the look and sensibilities of mahogany. Like when you look at it, it has so much going for it that's similar to mahogany, but this is a really good example of one that has the grain eccentricities of a wood like acacia. And I think the sound is reflected in that. The court, when you play it, when you play it softly, what you get is a kind of Hawaiian, almost chimey sound. But if you really dig in, it's possible to get a kind of jazzy, sort of mid-range honky sound. So this instrument is confused. It doesn't really understand whether it's acacia or mahogany, and that's what makes it great. Uh, this uke also comes with a bag for around sort of 210, 220 pound. And uh, yeah, we've just been absolutely blown away by these. Never played a bad one. And so far in 2019, this is possibly our best-selling ukulele. This has oven coal fingerboard and bridge, once again with a 35mm nut. And the tuners are an improved open back tuner, so a step up from the Kai and snail we've just looked at. But yeah, very traditional in its approach, but capable of doing things that you didn't think was imaginable. So an instrument that will grow with you for well under £300. Let's give it a play. trying to show you what I mean about the dynamics now.
Okay, this next instrument is possibly my favourite instrument that we sell here at SUS at the moment. This is the Eastman EU3T. The Eastman is special for a variety of reasons. First of all, just look at that mahogany and look at the shades of colour. You do not see that on any other mahogany instrument. I, I, I've had, of my own, in my own collection, I must have had 10 or 15 mahogany guitars and ukuleles. I've never had one that had oranges and yellows. It was, it's like a violin finish on this instrument. And it's nitrocellulose, so it's completely breathable. It's an instrument that will age quickly. It will develop with you as a player. And for about half the price of a standard Hawaiian K1T Kanalea or a Koaloa, this instrument really holds its own against those. It's a much more American folk sounding instrument than a Hawaiian sounding instrument, but that's what a lot of folk are after. Get the pun. So the Eastman has a slightly wider nut width. The nut width on the Eastman is 36 mil. Um, in case I didn't actually say explicitly, this is a kind of quilted mahogany top, back and sides with rosewood bindings with a little ply binding either side of it for a kind of subtle accentuation there's a rosette around the sound hole to a three ply binding with a rosewood fingerboard and bridge and a bone nut and saddle nice and traditional as it should be this is a mahogany uh, headstock with a mahogany neck and the neck on this is glossed which you don't see on too many intermediate to high-end instruments and i've personally always found a gloss neck to be very very comfortable uh, I can't recommend you try an Eastman enough. For under £500 currently in the UK, I don't think you're going to find another instrument that's made as well as this, and certainly not one that comes with a hard case. Rosewood fittings, nothing's been, ex no expense has been spared, and yet this instrument is not nearly as expensive as it looks, sounds, or feels. So I highly recommend the EU3T by Eastman, and we're going to give it a play now and see what you think. Eastman. Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is a Martin T1K, and everyone loves a Martin, don't they? Martin have a very unique place in the guitar and ukulele marketplace where a player will be a beginner and they will go, one day, if I get good enough, I will buy a Martin. And no other brand really has that significant appeal except perhaps Kamaka, uh, but Kamaka don't offer anything really in the... Uh, I want to say intermediate affordable price range. Martin do. And this C1K and T1K combination of Koa models they offer, are we get asked for them all the time. If we don't have one in stock, I guarantee the day after we will receive an email from a customer saying, I'm looking at visiting soon and I really want to have a look at a Martin when you're getting the next one in. The T1K is that popular. It's made of a Hawaiian Koa, solid Koa top, back and sides. They say a select hardwood bridge, uh, it's changed a few times. This looks like a variation of mahogany, possibly sapili, or um, they use morado sometimes for the wood on the neck. The fingerboard and bridge on this is morado, which is that palfero kind of material, with a, 
officially a 34 mil nut, but actually the T1K has a 35 mil nut. The Martin website's a bit out of date in that respect. This has open back tuners, good quality Martin tuners, and just a little bit of decoration. You've got this little uh, three ply binding rosette around the headstock. And this done does have side dots, but one thing to say against the Martin is that it can be quite hard to see the side dots because the wood grain is very light. And seemingly sometimes you do get a bit of an optical illusion on them. So that's something to consider if you can't try one before you buy. The T1K is a, is a banker. It's an instrument that most music shops should have. And it's one that we always try to have here at the Southern Ukulele Store. And many of you will compare this instrument to a Pono or the Eastman that we've just looked at, or possibly the next instrument we're gonna look at, which is the Koaloa Opio. And the T1K certainly holds its own, but it's worth noting to get a US made Martin, the instruments that they've kind of built their reputation on, you would have to spend twice the price. The Martin is Uke is around 1700 pounds and the style two Ukes we've had in the past have been um, uh, kind of upwards of 1400 pound. The T1K is very interesting because it's, 600 pound so i wouldn't necessarily look at it and assume that with the logo on the headstock that you're getting something that's uh, an equivalent to say a kanalea k1 or a koaloa but this is a very very good intermediate instrument and something worth a look if you are budgeting for your next ukulele and you've got a, say a thousand pounds to spend you may well walk away with one of these and be extremely happy i'm going to give it a play and i hope that you like it too Okay, the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Koaloha KTO-10S, which stands for the Koaloha Tenor Opio 10 Spruce. I don't know what the 10's for, it's obviously their model for a spruce top with acacia back and size, and that's exactly what this has. A solid spruce top with some really lovely acacia back and sides. The acacia can vary from one model to the other, some of them are very dark, some of them are this kind of, I want to say like a greeny colour but it reflects gorgeously in the light. They, uh, they have a mahogany neck, and quite often they have a little bit of curl in the neck as well. It's like a little bit, a little bit of quirky wood grain in the neck there too. But the most important thing to note about the Koaloa KTO 10S is the mahogany fingerboard and bridge, which feels completely unique, and I don't think is available on any other kind of large produced instrument out there. The OPOs are, another uniquely priced instrument for around 700 to 750 pound. This model sits just below a Koaloa KTM 00, which will be say 1100 pound. You know, you're looking at a significant jump up, but this is the next step down in the price ladder. And I would really struggle to feel a difference between a Koaloa KTM 00 and the OPO. I think if you put me side by side with them and I had to do this, I couldn't tell you if one was made better than the other. The OPO standard is so high that Koaloa literally took away the word OPO from the headstock. And as far as I can tell, they've just decided to make the OPO range the introductory standard model for the Koaloa Hawaiian ukulele range. So the OPOs are made in Thailand or the KTO 10S spruces. I should, K the KTO 10S is made in Thailand, I should say. I should take the OPO name out of the uh, the listing, but that's what people know them as. Uh, it has a 37 mil nut with the closed back Koaloa branded black tuners, which everyone loves, including me. But yeah, you can't go wrong with this. This is, has been one of the most popular professional instruments. This is a very, very fashionable instrument for players to buy to have a pickup fitted because 
by the time they paid for the MySci and installation with this ukulele, they're still saving £100 on a Hawaiian Koa model. And I would argue that the spruce top is beneficial to the sound. Not everybody is after that Hawaiian Koa sound. And for those of you that are playing in groups or need to be heard alongside other people, this spruce top model is probably more appropriate for you. Don't hesitate to look at the KTO 10S. I'm going to give it a play now and I hope you like it too. Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Pono MTSHCPC. And that really catchy code translates to the mahogany tenor with the slotted headstock, the cedar top, and it's part of Pono's Pro Classic range. And the Pro Classic range is the range of ukuleles that we get most requested to feature in these videos. But here in the UK, we have a really hard time getting the Pro Classics because they're not really readily available, I think, from Pono. Pono changed their line of instruments quite regularly, and by the time our supplier here in the UK, our distributor, is caught up, uh, quite often Pono has already moved on. So we end up sometimes with stock that's just on its way out, even though it's been launched fairly recently. It can be quite a confusing circle we go through, but the most popular model uh, or series of models we get uh, is the MTC PC and this MT SHC PC. So the same ukulele with and without the slotted headstock. And what makes the Pro Classic series special and relevant in their price point is a few different things. But if, firstly, if you look at the Pono standard series, you're looking at around 350 to 400 pound. If you look at the deluxe series, you're looking at another 100 pound on top. And then if you look at kind of another thousand pound, sixteen hundred pound more, uh, you get the Kulau Hawaiian custom shop instruments. And the Pro Classics take a lot of the designs that the custom shop make and transform them into more affordable uh, Isle of Java made Pono instruments. This Pro Classic retails for around 900 pound, but it does sit quite uniquely because it's the only instrument that I could recommend to a customer who wanted a normal 35mm standard slim and nut. And if you're used to a Carla or you've been playing an Ohana for the last five years and then you're looking at getting your first high-end ukulele, sometimes the 38mm nut on a Kanalea or the 37mm nut on the Koalawa Opio isn't what you're looking for. Sometimes what you want is that 35mm nut. And what Pono have done as well with this particular Pro Classic is put in a very, very subtle radius on the fingerboard. So this instrument is just comfortable. It's a home away from home and there are plenty of players out there. I was chatting to Mark Gallagher last week when we did the videos and he uses the Pono Pro Classic and he teaches, he performs. He knows that instrument inside out because he's been playing other instruments that felt like it for a very long time. And all he's done is really refine what he already knew. So this has a cedar top, really nice select cedar top with the mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck with the Grover tuners, the radius fingerboard with the 35mm nut and a little bit of decoration. You've got ebony binding there, you've got a little rosette. But what makes this instrument perform well is that it's designed for somebody who needs to perform. So if you need a bit of volume, see the top, it's got you covered. If you want something that sounds a bit traditional, those mahogany back and sides have that. The slotted headstock is a bit stylish and adds a little bit of a kind of downward tilt on the uh, string angle as it goes through the nut and that gives you a bit more attack but on the whole you've just got a solid instrument designed for anybody and competing price wise with the Koa Loa OPO range but also competing with the slightly more expensive Hawaiian made Kanalea, Kamaka etc. Pono Pro Classic MTSHC PC, go to play and I hope you like it.
Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Chris Perkins Amazique Tenor. And some of you will be asking, who is Chris Perkins? And that's a good question. Chris Perkins is a UK-based luthier, building fantastic tenors and um, tenor baritones that we've sold. And many of our customers highly recommend Chris and his work. I've not played a bad instrument from Chris. I've seen maybe half a dozen now in his short time that he's been building and I think he may have one of the top reviews from um, Baz Maz's Got A Ukulele website and he deserves it. This ukulele is fantastic. Amazik is a unique word. It's a, it's a derivative of oven coal. So if you look at this ukulele all around, it's just completely flamey and swirly and just, just gorgeous. And the unique shape kind of helps that. It's almost like a dreadnought tenor. It's, uh, it's like the otter shape that Kamaka make, but enlarged to a tenor size. The fingerboard is Rocklight Ebano, which I just accidentally called Rocklight Ebola a moment ago, and that's why I had to do the sharp cut, but I thought it was funny, so let's keep it in. Rocklight Ebano, which is a, an ebony-like synthetic wood, so it's, it's taking many pieces of wood and putting them together to manufacture a new piece of wood. Uh, one thing I like about Chris's work is he has a 38mm nut with quite a chunky neck, so guitarists tend to like his ukuleles, but the slight flat point on the back is good for your thumb because it helps you do more precise fret work and you don't have to put quite so much effort in when you fret the instrument. Um, the other thing to note is that Chris has used a pin bridge, much like Kanalea do, and he's using the Goto UPT planetary tuners. But I think you'll see more of Chris as time goes on, I think he's going to further establish himself as being one of the best builders in the UK if not the world he's great um, I can't show you the inside of this ukulele very well but his bracing is just even his bracing is kind of quirky looking so that when you look inside the instrument you get a bit of a treat um, I love your work Chris please keep it up this is not a cheaper instrument this is a UK built instrument for 1350 pounds so very similar in price to a Canelaire K1 made in Hawaii but made by one person in their workshop in Staffordshire. Chris Perkins, well done. This is the Amazig Tenor and I hope you guys all like it too. Okay, the next ukulele we're going to look at is one we have featured quite recently. This is the Rebel Particle, and this particular model is a combination of spruce with western red cedar, with ebony sides, and a very gorgeous flat red paduk back. The best bit for me though is the way the binding is paduk, but different paduk to the back. So you've got different shades of reds and oranges and browns working your way around this instrument. It's so well put together and tied in. The particle also features a little side sound hole, which is becoming more and more popular for players that just need to be able to hear themselves more in a group setting. This has a wider 38mm nut width with slightly rolled off frets. The frets end before the fingerboard, which is a koaloa trait and something that makes the instrument feel instantly comfortable. You don't get those sharp fret ends when you play it. The neck is mahogany with uh, off, uh, not matching, unpaired Goto planetary tuners with the uh, black uh, tulip buttons. But yeah, ebony fingerboard and bridge, but also a slightly paduk fingerboard too, half and half. And that changes the sound. We've had a couple of these in and done sound comparisons and they're all just ever so slightly different. So you know you're getting a unique instrument with the Rebel. If you want more information, please watch our other video that I've linked in the description all about the Rebel Particle and some of the other models in the range. In the meantime, this is the Rebel Particle, one of the best instruments you can get for well under £2,000.
last UK label to feature today is the Cunnilea 2019 Platinum Pineapple Tenor Ukulele. And we've featured this one before, but this is a new one that came in this week. And the other three we had sold out so quickly, we didn't really get a chance to feature it properly. This has the Master Grade Koa top, back and sides, with a very cheeky pineapple sound hole in the side, so you can hear yourself more. And what I like about this pineapple sound hole is that when the instrument's played, it, you get all of the tone. You don't just get the brighter tones. This pineapple sound hole delivers the full body experience of the pineapple. It has a mahogany neck, which is a satin finish to offset the gloss on the body. It feels a bit more worn in from new with Canalea's super thin headstock there with the very, very small stealth tuners. The Canalea's have a 38 mil nut and this is uh, the first year to introduce the True R bracing, which is the honeycomb like scaffolding bracing they have inside all of their instruments. Uh, I featured the Canalea Platinums more in depth in a previous video as well, very recently, but it felt silly not to include the most high end tenor that we have in the shop in this video because let's face it, any excuse I can have to play this instrument, I'm gonna take, and so would you. So this is the Candelaria Platinum 2019 Pineapple Tenor, and uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay guys, so you've heard all 10, and I mean they range dramatically in price, but what did you think? I'm sure you had a favourite. I had two or three favourites in this list, but all 10 of these instruments are instruments that I would not hesitate to show to a customer and say, you're going to struggle to find something better at this price. It may not be for you, or it may be the instrument you've been searching for your whole life. Bit dramatic, I know, but hey, I sell ukuleles, I'm allowed to be a bit dramatic. I would love to hear from some of you in the comments. If you've got any questions, you can email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk or you can call the store and chat to me or one of the team on 01202 430820. Uh, yeah, I absolutely adored filming this video today. I'm sorry that I had to come down in the basement. One thing to note is that for instruments with the sound side hole, I deliberately filmed today's video with a microphone facing below me. So you really got the true reflection of how this instrument would sound, more so than had I filmed it as a right-handed player. So if anyone in the comments is thinking, well, why is he demoing that he's left-handed? Just remember that sound-wise, which is the most important thing, you are getting everything you need to get from this instrument in the demonstration. Uh, once again, I'm Alex, and I really look forward to speaking to you guys again soon.